camera action. All right. The audio level's good. Testing, testing, one, two. This That's is fine. my brother, Bobby, and he's a big goober. In our last episode, Bobby and I were able to go to the Chihuly collection and see some amazing art pieces that Chihuly had created. We were also able to watch two glassblowers make a piece of art right in front of us during their glassblowing demonstration. Inspired by that, today, Bobby and I are headed over to Zen Glass Studios to try our hand at glassblowing as well. They offer multiple courses from not only one-day workshops, to 15 week courses that Bobby's starting today. I am, I'm quitting videography. I'm starting this 15 week course. And I'm going to be the next Chihuly. We both have watched multiple episodes of Blown Away on Netflix. So I'm, I'm pretty sure we're very well researched and we'll knock it out the park. I feel confident. I watched two whole episodes, so I'm ready to go. The workshop offers kind of three different types that you can choose from, either paperweights, ornaments, or what we chose, goblets. Because who doesn't want a nice, cool goblet to drink out of? I mean, I'm trying to be Tyrion Lannister. I drink wine and I don't know thanks. <laughs> Honestly, I wanted to go paperweight because I'm a little bit nervous about today because we're gonna have to film this as we're doing something. That's gonna be kind of challenging. And I figured a paperweight, nice and easy, hard to mess up. But then Charlie's like, it would be much funnier if we do mess up, which I'm sure we will if we try to make a goblet. That seems much harder and uh, something that we will definitely screw up. One thing you can count on Leonard Bros is our exquisite sense of fashion. <laughs> <laughs> and I went with this shirt because instead of a legendary martial artist, I'm a mediocre hobbyist and want to be in a similar position doing a different type of art, just probably much worse than whatever he did with this. And I went with this shirt because it doesn't have any holes in the armpit. <laughs> You can't see the sweat stains in it. That's also true. That is why so, I wear black. Stay tuned for more fashion tips by the Leonard Bros. <laughs> Here's how you cut your jeans into shorts. <laughs> Here's how to keep women from talking to you. <laughs> so now we're gonna pick up our camera, head on over to the hot shop, and hopefully our cameras don't melt. So if you see us again, the cameras didn't melt. So here we are at Zen Glass Studios. We're about to start the process of creating our goblet. The first thing you gotta do is you gotta pick the top, what you wanna drink out of your chalice or goblet or wine glass. You can see they have several options for you to choose from. Once you choose the top of your chalice or goblet or whatever you want, then you move on to choosing a base for your goblet. Now, the suggestion from the instructor was to choose a base that is proportional to the top that you're gonna use. So you wouldn't want a super wide base with a, with a narrow top, you know? So mix and match what you want. Ultimately, it's your choice. You can do whatever you want. And then once you're done with that, you come on over to here. And at this station over here, you get to pick what colors are gonna go into the stem of your goblet or chalice or whatever you choose to make. So that's what I'm in the process of doing. Right now, I like these three colors. I like this kind of nice, rich blue this brown and this green, I think are gonna be the colors that I end up going with. So we'll see what happens. Alrighty, today we're gonna to be working with borosilicate, which is a very dense glass molecularly. I am Alex Puga and I am a lamp worker. I work at Zen Glass Studio. I also run a private bench there. Uh, we'll start out with our 12 mil handle, keep it spinning so that way we can make sure that the handle gets hot enough. And then once it starts to glow, we'll go ahead and grab our first color so that way the first color can start to glow evenly with that rod. And that way when we attach them, they adhere to each other. And once we work that full color in, we'll work on our next two colors. We'll assess how much mass we have once we're done mixing everything up and fold it over and then mix some more glass into it if we feel like it was too small. From there, we will heat everything up and start to shape it out, rolling it out on the marber or squishing it with the iron, depending on what shape we're going after. From there, it's up to our discretion how much we'd like to shape it. And once we are happy with our shape, then we're gonna move on to either stretching it out or assembly, depending on how you feel about your shape. And then I will take over from there, adding the foot first and then adding the head and putting it in the kiln. I honestly recommend coming in to do one of the cup workshops, whether it be the goblet or the wine glass, just because it's a functional piece you can use once you're done and you can think about your experience more often. So we just picked up our glasses from Zen Glass Studios. Ours turned out absolutely fantastic. And we got to grab an interview with our instructor from yesterday. Bobby, how do you think your glass turned out? I think it did pretty well, man. I was going for a tricolor effect, but they all got mixed together, but I'm not mad at it. I call it the neon icicle. <laughs> Mine is, uh, 
extremely long. It's never gonna fit in any dishwasher ever, but I'm really proud of it. I really like it. It's actually kind of fun to hold on to because it's got these little bulbs coming out. So it kind of has some grip on it. But you do get a pretty deep satisfaction out of making something on your own. And the fact that you can actually drink out of this, which uh, I think we're gonna do later. Or break it over your brother's head. <laughs> you wanna do one thing? That is some good 33 day old grape juice, man. Aged perfectly. By the way, uh, this video is not sponsored by Burger King nor Welch's, but we are open to talk. Yeah, reach out and out if you liked it. <laughs> Three people probably watch this. <laughs> One might be our mom. I'm no wino, but I'm pretty sure this is a uh, Pinot Cabernet. <laughs> A Sauvignon Blanc or something. <laughs> you can taste this is a, a, um, a Sovereign Blanco. <laughs> <laughs> you can taste that the grapes are from California. Mm -hmm. In the Napa Valley. You can tell that the guy stomping these grapes didn't wash his feet for a few days. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Welch's. It's delicious. I'm still open to top business. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is definitely a great uh, date idea, but both of us are single, so we just brought each other. <laughs> You're the best date ever, Bobby. <laughs> this, this is a great, this is a great date idea, but unfortunately, we live by a code. <laughs> it's not a code that we choose to live by, it just happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it just happens, so we, we lean into it. And pretend like we do it on purpose. Yeah, that's right. Perfect. If you guys are watching that and you're like, wow, that looks cinematic. <laughs> <laughs> you set it all up. What can I say? <laughs> Charlie and I, you know, as far as exploring vineyards and being sophisticated, this is about as far as we go. <laughs> we like that Welch's stuff, you know? It, that's fair. That <laughs> checks out. We prefer a slightly uh, sweeter tones to our grape juice. <laughs> Charlie's had a few glasses too many. He's out, I need to put him to bed. <laughs> so, if you enjoyed watching, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, but either way, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Yeah.